everyone, it's me, Matsmas. Today's going to be a fairly short video, but something that I thought was quite prevalent for me to mention, especially being part of the artillery community, even though I am just a reservist, uh, I think it's kind of part of my duty to try and reinforce uh, the emphasis on safety when working with pieces of equipment that are firing projectiles of such great size downrange and you are behind that gun. Uh, folks, safety comes paramount when you're working in a training environment. Of course, when you're on operational deployments, um, you know, in combat environments, things change a little bit. You know, sometimes we cut corners, we do things in a way that allow us to do things more efficiently, uh, more productively, but should still be done and conducted in a safe way manner and in today's short little snippet of a video I want to show you a couple of instances which uh, kind of terrified me a little bit now some of you are going to be a little triggered and say pardon the pun um, that this footage and this uh, particular instance isn't a big deal there's real no risk to injury it's not a huge concern I don't know why you're getting so worked up about it and it's not about being worked up it's it's more the principle of safety that I'm trying to focus on here that one little shortcut or one little thing that you think is going to make something go faster or be more productive could add up eventually to someone losing their life. I take safety extremely seriously when working on the gun line. Uh, simple little things can be extremely deadly um, when working in the, uh, the gun position. And you have to look out for one another. And I see this crew working hard, you know, on this gun. They're in the, the Paladin. They're working with the uh, 155mm uh, uh, gun here. So clearly these guys want to do well. They want to succeed. They want to have the gun firing rounds downrange as quickly as possible. But unfortunately, in this particular instance, um, they kind of cut a corner. Or the the uh, commander of the vehicle cuts a corner uh, to allow him to get the round downrange quicker than I'm sure some of the other guns in his gun position. Now, this isn't a judgment call here. This isn't saying that the crew is doing a bad job or that the crew made a mistake or this is something that, um, you know, is a bad deal. I mean, everybody has their own prerogative. They have their own mentality of doing something. But I want to try and reinforce to those who are going into the military world, especially in the artillery world, being that I'm a gunner now, to please don't cut corners. Don't do things just to save a few seconds. It's just not worth it. It's not worth the risk to your safety other people's safety or potentially even your life. People can get bitten and hurt by huge chunks of metal like this very, very quickly, okay? And as I said, one little thing, sure, it's not a huge deal, but if you keep adding up the little things, the root cause is going to be a lot worse than it was than if you did things correctly. So please, folks, take heed of what I'm talking about today. I know you want to succeed. I know you want to be the best crew and the best gun line, whatever it may be, but you have to do things properly. The rules are there for a reason. As I mentioned, in combat environments, things are a little different. But what you're about to see is the crew commander of this vehicle, instead of applying the lanyard to the firing trigger mechanism to this howitzer, he's using what's called a finger pop. What that basically means is he's using his finger to depress or pull the trigger of the gun to save him some time than having to attach and disconnect the lanyard from the breech mechanism of this gun. It's saving him probably about two or three seconds from being able to reload the gun again. Basically, you'll see after this instance what they're actually supposed to do when they pull the trigger mechanism of this gun and the more safe way of doing it. The reason why you shouldn't be trying to do this particular kind of method by using your finger is when you're using a gun that's firing such a big piece of metal, the ram and the recoil of that gun firing back could not only break your arm, your wrist, your fingers or your hand, but it could really, really cause some issues for the rest of the crew members around there if you were not doing it in a way that, I mean, basically you, you might not have the right judgment call to pull that lanyard. That's the whole point of having the other person on the line, is you're waiting for that call of command. And it, to me, it's a little untrustworthy to have, your, you know, your gun commander, your troop commander at the time, pull in the trigger in an unsafe manner. It's just not a good, I guess... What's the word? It's just not responsible in my eyes. Um, as I said, it's not a judgment call. I have no fault of this crew. They're doing it out of best interest. They're doing it in what they think is the, the best way of doing this. But please take heed of this, folks. Don't do something like this. Could you get someone really, really hurt? Let's take a look at the footage. Oh my god! 
Now, as I mentioned, this this instance isn't something that's being done to, you know, cut corners to because they can't be bothered or they're just being lazy or they're being complacent. It's because they want to perform. They want to do their job as quickly as possible. And big shout out and respect for them wanting to do that. But as I mentioned, you have to make sure you follow the rules because you just don't want to get hurt in a situation where no one needed to be hurt. You know, breaking your wrist or your fingers just so you get three seconds over on the next gun. It's just not worth it. I'm going to show you another instance of the same thing happening. This time, it's not the commander actually pulling the uh, the trigger here. It's actually one of the loaders of the gun, and even more risky in this situation. Let's take a look. So again, the crew has the best intention. They just want to succeed. They want to perform and do the job 100%. That's what any gunner wants to do. They want to get rounds downrange as quickly as possible, support what their job is to do. But you have to look after one another. And I just get terrified of seeing these kind of situations. You know, and it's not... It's not making out these people to be bad soldiers, bad gunners. They're outstanding troops. They're doing what they need to do. But I just get really scared when knowing that that kind of practice is happening and that troops could get really, really hurt uh, from just saving a little bit of time. And, you know, in the artillery, we triple check everything. And this is one thing that you just don't need to be cutting the corners on. Figure something else out. Find somewhere else that's not jeopardizing yours or someone else's safety when it comes to, you know, trying to get expediting you know rounds down range so i know this is a little bit of a more serious side of uh, the videos that i've been releasing but uh, i thought it was really important i kind of share it with you guys and maybe you guys can share it with others if you guys are upset with the fact that i've called this out and you're not agreeing and you're like actually finger popping's amazing it's not dangerous it's uh, it's useful for guns you know and, and no disrespect to that if you feel that this action is legitimate and it's safe then good for you i'm not going to judge anyone on this it's merely just an observation and i want to make sure that uh, you know i kind of share it and see if i can bring at least to light a little bit the kind of risks that you put yourself in when you cut corners and do things that really aren't per procedure anyway thanks for watching everyone today and i hope you have a wonderful one all the best bye bye